model that you, you can see in the display, the International Loss Control Institute Loss Causation Model or LCM for short. Eh? Uh, that was um, uh, created by Bert and Germain eh, in, in 1985. So, <coughs> why does it call? Why is it called simple linear? Because it explains uh, in a linear way okay, how accident happened uh, from from the end uh, to the to the cause. Eh? So, to explain what are the causes of um, accident so if you can see from the display here you can find uh, five box eh? five box and each of these box is labeled as um, uh, start from the right eh? loss incident immediate cause basic cause and lack of control eh? so this is linear linear means that you can see arrow pointing to all to the one direction eh? and usually from left to right uh, but when you want to explain about causality, apa yang menyebabkan, you have to explain from right to left. Okay, but if you want to explain about uh, influence, okay, you have to start from left to right. Okay, uh, so let's look at this model. So when I explain, I start from the right. Eh? Usually, when something happen, workplace accident happen, it will start with losses, eh? losses. So losses in terms of people, you know, to say, you know, death, and also severe injury that caused them to, you know, unable to work for a long period of time, and there are also uh, property loss and eh? destruction of properties, of machineries, eh? of assets. And there are also loss of processes, eh? the, meaning to say you are actually doing something at that time, maybe producing t-shirts, eh? producing, producing shoes, <coughs> and then something happened, accident happened, then uh, the, the process is lost. Okay, whatever t-shirt or shoes that was in the process of production will be lost, lah, your stock. Eh? So, why is, why is that happen? Eh? Why, what, what causes the loss to happen? So we look back one uh, one box to the left, okay, that is incident. So incident causes loss. So in this model, it uses the term incident. Yeah? So it doesn't use the word accident. It uses incident. So I don't want to confuse you uh, between accident and incident. Just accept that accident and incident is the same. Uh, there is an explanation behind it, but I don't want to go uh, to that deep. Uh. So you just consider incident is uh, the same term as accident. So what causes the loss? Uh, property loss, people loss, process loss. It will be the incident uh, or uh, accident. So in LCM, incident is stated as contact with energy or substances. Uh. So, I mean to say, <coughs> if somebody died because of severe burn, uh, so that person previously was in contact with fire. Uh, so, fire is the hazard. So, here is where you can find the hazards. Uh. What are the hazards? Where are the, where, where does, uh, what kind of event that meets the people and the hazard? Okay, what are the events that causes people to meet the hazard? Uh, if someone died because of burning, so what is the event? It will be fire. Fire is where, and then there will be people who are who died. He or she will be in that fire. Okay, so that person meets the hazard, the fire. If property loss, if there is no people, might be property. A property was on fire so the property is the asset and the fire is the energy eh? the energy so the event usually you put here so simple as okay what happened to him eh? he was uh, was involved in an accident oh, can you explain more what is the accident or no, the accident is you know when he drives his his car he lost control and then he hits a pole 
uh, electric pole <coughs> so uh, that is the event so you have to put inside there and the event eh? <coughs> so a car collision eh? car collision that causes the driver to die and then causality of this incident what causes the incident to happen okay we look to the left there will be causes eh? so in lcm there are two uh, different causes one is called immediate causes and one is called basic causes so we look at the immediate causes eh? the immediate causes is the causes that immediately causes the incident to happen and there are two types eh, of causes eh? immediate causes number one is substandard act or and substandard condition it might be a standalone it might be only x it might be only condition or it might be combination of both x and condition <coughs> okay and <coughs> um, we ask again why does that person do such a thing okay uh, so maybe the incident was somebody fell down and then the immediate causes but because that, that somebody is you know uh, is a climb a really uh, tall workplace uh, places and he tiptoed uh, at the edge of a building for example so we want to explanation why does that person do that uh? so always ask about why uh, why why so that asking why will lead you to the more you know more basic causes and will explain more i don't want you as a manager or bosses you just stop here a lot of the managers bosses or employers or organization is just organization they just stop here eh? they want to know why and then okay why did you do that it is your and then they start blaming eh? because you know because it started with the the workers yeah. So workers doing this, workers doing that, what that wasn't supposed to do. So and then the investigation stopped there and started to blame the worker, and that and that is why the accident happened because you are negligent. Yeah. To why? <coughs> because you are lalai. Yeah. Because you do not follow want to follow rules. Yeah. Because you are stubborn. Okay, these are. The, the norms uh, these are the things that you can always find in an organization uh. a lot of managers and bosses behave that way uh, because they don't want to investigate in great length what causes the workers to act that way uh, what causes a uh, condition created that way uh, that contributes uh, to the accident and again when we look to the left Okay, whatever happened here in the immediate causes are there are causes okay and it's called basic causes okay so why people behave in this there will be causes there are personal factors and there are job factors why the condition is that way also you can refer uh, to the left box there there are personal factors and there are job factors okay i will talk about this in detail after this and then again, we do not stop it here, eh? or because he is old, or because he is this and that. Eh? Always look at the person. Eh? There are also job factors eh, that we will look after this. And why this happen? Okay, why does the personal factors exist? Why does the job factors exist? Okay, coming back to here to the left, the last box here is because of lack control, eh? lack of control. For example, there are no program to uh, oversee the behavior of people or of workers. Okay, to oversee the condition of the workers, there are uh, no programs to oversee the the job design. For example, eh? if there is a program, the program is weak, or if there is a program. Okay. people don't follow that program so that was uh, the lack of control means eh? 
So these are some of the um, explanation uh, or why uh, under the immediate cause. Okay, what is substandard acts? And substandard acts are those um, errors that is committed by workers, uh, the slips, the lapses. I will talk about this later on in detail, and mistakes. Yeah. <coughs> so these are um, human error. Okay, you do what you should not do. Benda yang you sepat, you benda yang tak sepatutnya you buat, you buat. Or you did not do what you should do. Benda yang sepatutnya you buat, you tak buat. Huh? So these are the things that usually causes, uh, usually, uh, not all the time, usually triggers uh, the accident, for example. Uh, say for example, <coughs> you know, you are standing in a dangerous flammable atmosphere, uh, ruang udara yang boleh terbakar, and then you, you forgot about it, and then you start smoking there. Yeah? So you are doing what you are not supposed to do, and suddenly, boom, uh, fire happens. Okay, there is the trigger. Yeah, and there are also substandard condition. Okay, like the example that I've just given, there are two. One is the act, one is the condition. The act is lighting uh, your cigarette, <coughs> and there is condition. The condition is flammable atmosphere. So the combination of both created an event, which is the fire. Eh? So, it might be combination of act and condition, or it might be only act, or it might be only condition. Eh? So, you have to look at case by case scenario. So, um, example of substandard condition would be faulty, broken, malfunction of assets at the time of the event. Okay. For example, you are driving your car, and then, and then suddenly, boom, you hit a loud bang. Okay. Maybe you, so, you, you, you thought that maybe the tire exploded. And then you lose control, and then you hit your your car goes into the drain. Yeah? So the exploding tire is the substandard condition, lah. Yeah? Uh, <coughs> it might be at that point of time the assets, the productive assets, uh, overheated. Yeah, maybe a machine overheated, overloaded, yeah, with materials, overworking. Yeah, the machine is supposed to work for two hours, but you run it for eight hours eh? overflow over pressure condition eh? Every, everything that you can find over lah, eh? and sometimes under eh? not not enough not enough eh? under under flow eh? the flow should be um, you know this this volume eh? but it doesn't um, uh, the, the reality does not uh, fill into that volume so it created a dangerous situation Mixing of two or more incompatible materials. Eh? Sometimes this happen where in the places where we cannot see. Eh? Uh, supposed to be these two uh, chemicals cannot mix together yeah? uh, in the process system. But suddenly something happen. Yeah? The two of the chemicals mix together and created a fire, for example. Eh? Presence of uncontrolled ignition or heat, so heat sources. Yeah? So these are the things yeah, you need to find. Whenever an accident happens, uh, what are the immediate causes? And then you ask why. Why does people make mistakes? Why does, you know, there are overflowed pipelines, for example. Why are... I mean, why does the tire explode? Why does this machine malfunction? So the answer would be the basic causes. Huh? There might be personal factors, it might be job factors, it might be combination of both. Huh? That explain why people behave in such a way. That explains why job becomes in such a way. Eh? So personal factors, <coughs> these are some of the examples, huh? not all. For example, why people behave in such a way, it might be because of their physical, mental or emotional state. Okay, um, emotionally unstable. Eh? Because before that person arrived at work, he was in a fight with the wife, for example. So, he cannot focus and eh? his mind is, uh, you know, chaotic. And then, 
at the same time he does a very critical work uh, to control um, you know switches uh, for hazardous condition so that might affect the way the worker behave eh? <coughs> it might be incompetence okay or inexperience incompetence means to say um, the worker was not trained to do that job but you know the bosses force him to do it because there there is no one else yeah? inexperience you know maybe it's because of uh, an unfamiliarity okay maybe a, a somebody that is used to job a but suddenly he was taken to do job b that he was unfamiliar with okay so inexperience might be contributing to the behavior it might be of their physical age eh? aging maybe it's too old to do that kind of job yeah? maybe too young to do that job okay or maybe he was fatigued you know he was doing a uh, double shift back to back maybe that person is having some kind of illness that he doesn't want to tell anyone about it he wants to still do a good job maybe he's under the influence of substances you know, drugs maybe he was pressured by their colleagues yeah to do things that wasn't supposed to do okay there are also job factors that contributed uh, for example uh, poor design of job tasks you can find this a lot uh, if you really look into it a uh, low quality material of course uh, i personally experienced lah uh, whereby when someone bought a uh, low quality material and overwork the machine or equipment and causes electrical fire eh? poor maintenance poor supervision from the supervisors or the bosses eh? disturbances at the workplace eh? like noise like uh, you know disruption from colleagues eh? and maybe from visitors missing unclear obsolete instructions eh? they are no sop to follow and if there are sop you you cannot understand it okay if there if there is a good sop but it is obsolete yeah? no it is not current anymore referring to the old chemical for example maybe while they are working yeah um they are in a bad location or in a bad weather and this is also also something that is uh, usually happen time pressure eh? time pressure because of bad scheduling you know the bosses just forget you know about the time needed to do the job and suddenly workers are forced to do uh, a job yeah, that is supposed to do for 3 hours but need to complete it within 1 hours yeah, and then there is a lot of high workload so these are all contributory factors uh, to why workers behave in such a way uh, at the workplace eh? and also after that you have to ask why all of this happening yeah and the main reason yeah of why the basic causes and of why the immediate causes happening are lack of management control lack of control there are maybe no control at all or if there is a control is inadequate tak cukup yeah There is no risk management done. For example, there is no organizational learning. Eh? They don't learn from past lesson, past accident. They just forget about it. There is no safe system of work. They just do work. Eh? They don't think about the work. Is it safe or not? There is no consequence management. For example, if something bad happen, okay, there is some kind of repercussion or consequences. Maybe you have you can have to discipline the workers uh, to avoid violations. Uh. Uh, management supervision absence of management supervision over organizational process these are the things that um, you know started off everything yeah? so if an organization wants to pre- prevent um, an accident happening they have to increase or improve uh, this control okay having a risk management plan so you from the negative you turn it into a positive make sure that everything is there yeah, to reduce the risk of accident happening
so um, I will use a example eh, to show you how to uh, how to use the loss control model eh, loss causation model so, so this is a real example that I took from a case study eh. so please have a look at it and read it because it's a bit long yeah. um, it's about Deirdre Kelly <coughs> uh, he was she was an aging workers in her 60s and her job was to push trolley eh, that carry equipment from one point to another and then one day um, Mrs. Kelly uh, tore her ligament eh, in one of her feet and causes her extreme pain yeah. for those who have experienced yeah, torn ligament especially the sports men sport women out there you know lah how painful yeah, it can be when you tear your ligament yeah, part of the muscle of your legs uh, is uh, you know ruptured yeah, koyak uh, so Mrs. Kelly needs to push trolley. Uh, trolley is loaded uh, with equipment. Uh, they usually weigh around 190 kilogram each trolley. And then one day she has to do this because she was very experienced in the job. That is, you know, something that they, she always do for over 20 years. But during that day, one of the trolley was having uh, a broken wheel. Uh, we call it dodgy wheel. Uh. Maybe some of you have experience when you go shopping and then when you pick up a trolley that, you know, the wheels on the trolley is not so good. So it's, it's, it's not so easy to control the trolley. Sometimes you want to go right and then it, the trolley goes left. And sometimes it's really difficult to move the trolley when it's heavy and you have to, you know, put in extra effort yeah, to push the trolley. <coughs> so, and that happened to Mrs. Kelly. Um, and at the same time, she should have worked in pairs with the colleague, but the the colleague was not around, uh, so she had to do it by herself. And then, at some point, she has to struggle uh, with the weight of the trolley, um, plus uh, with the dodgy wheel, the broken wheel, so she had to put extra effort uh, in terms of physical force. Uh, she has to use the full strength of her body to push the trolley to its destination. So somehow, uh, during that process, eh, uh, she tore her ligament uh, out of her right leg. So after that, she was uh, um, unable to work eh, for four months. So that is the scenario, uh, this, the case study. So if you put this accident, yeah, what happened to Mrs. Kelly into the loss causation model, so you will see like this. Yeah. <coughs> okay. As I said before, loss causation model would have five, you know, five blocks started with loss. What causes loss? The incident. What causes the incident? The immediate cause. What causes the immediate cause? The basic cause. What causes the basic cause? The lack of control. What happened? Mrs. Kelly cannot work for four months. Why does it happen? What what makes her, you know, can unable to carry the work? It's because an incident where she tear her ligament. Uh, when over pushing trolley so this is what happened the event and right? this is the event and then what causes this okay we look at the immediate causes number one would be um unsafe act lah. unsafe act uh, substandard act would be to over pushing exit unnecessary extra force at the same time she also pick up yeah uh, a trolley with dodgy wheels. I'm not sure whether there are other choices. Okay, for normal people, we would have to choose. Uh, if you find that trolley is not so good, then you choose a better one, lah. But maybe you know that is the only trolley that she has. A uh, trolley with dodgy wheels. What causes her to over pushing? 
over pushing for someone who, who who is a young person maybe it's not over pushing but because of of her aging legs and she was 60 years old somewhere around that age so to her it's over pushing so why does mrs kelly over pushing exert unnecessary extra force it might be because it was a burden to her because she has you know aging legs she was in the 60s and at the same time the trolley is a heavy trolley up to 900 190 kg that is very heavy if you if you give me that that trolley also i'm not sure whether i can push it or not you know um and then at the same point of time also her body went missing oh, she was not there maybe didn't come to work okay and you ask why there are still trolley with dodgy wheels eh? because for a trolley to work uh, in a good way all the wheels must be in a good condition eh? so the basic causes that causes the trolley having dodgy wheels because of poor maintenance of the trolley it is the responsibility of the organization or management to make sure that they check the trolley and find out which of the trolley has dodgy wheels and replace it with new wheels okay so is that uh something that mrs kelly has control over no she has no control over who does the maintenance when should they do maintenance and because her job was just to push trolley eh? so when we ask again why all of this happening okay why there are still uh old people pushing heavy trolley okay and why is there why is there still trolley that is that carry heavy load eh, such a heavy load uh, why you know people missing from work still happens eh, without explanation why does mrs kelly continue to do work even without her body there eh? and why does the trolley is not maintained well okay, we always ask this question to find out the real truth behind it so when we think about it there might be a lack of control from the from the side of the management it's not totally uh, mrs kelly's fault okay? it's not a fault because she just do her work that is what she supposed to do she will make do with anything that she has eh? and she has been doing that for many years and that is the nature of workers eh? sometimes the workers just want to complete the job in time regardless of what is the condition regardless of what is the equipment that they have at that point of time so when we ask that question we find out that the company does not have any program uh, to look at who is among their workforce <laughs> that is aging and still doing that heavy heavy job okay if they have that program so they might identify mrs kelly earlier on and maybe relocate her to a more simple job so that is not burdening her physical physical state there might be no program from the part of the organization or the bosses or the management to redesign the job okay for 20 years the same trolley the same load the same technique the same method the same sop and there is no review of uh, you know or investment on how to make it more efficient or make it more uh, safer yeah? for example instead of using trolley might might use um, something that is automated okay or maybe um, a machine uh, a carrying machine that you know can handle heavy load instead of trolley have bigger and stronger wheels yeah? and why does that why there is no control on the missing colleague okay it's because of poor management supervision over operation okay they just let it be 
if there is a supervisor there they might say that okay mrs kelly you hold on we will wait and uh, somewhat somebody to help you push the trolley for example uh, because this is a two person job and uh, not one person <coughs> the supervisor is missing it might be because of poor management supervision over maintenance work maybe they have hired a company to do maintenance but that company you know hanky panky does not come on time or maybe does not check all trolleys okay maybe they will they will miss one or two trolley because you know of a certain reason and the management did not check it yeah so <clears throat> here what we can see is that for to prevent an accident there must be better control eh, on this side okay and we cannot just blame the workers for everything that happened eh, because when you look really uh, and find out uh, what really happened you only have yourself to blame eh. <laughs> if you are the manager of the workplace eh. if you don't do all of this it is you who are supposed to be blamed it is you who are supposed to be fined it is you who are supposed to be jailed and eh, not the workers eh. unless if you have all of this but still uh, the workers violates eh, don't want to follow all of the program that you have you have uh, <coughs> designed and do it at her own risk and that will be uh, the workers fault lah but you know rarely we find such a case eh.